Thank you for listening, citizens, to the Daily Disney Blog Podcast with, of course, the bodacious, could he be the new launch pad, Brad Hughes. You'll feel the difference. Stay dangerous. Darkwing Duck out. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, the voice behind Goofy and Pluto and many of your Disney favorites, and you're listening to the Daily Disney Blog right here. Hey everybody, this is Brad with the Daily Disney Blog, your source for all things Disney and a how-to guide to Walt Disney World. Before we get the show started, I would like to invite you to follow me over on Twitter at Daily Disney Blog. You can also check out our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash the Daily Disney Blog. You can send listener questions to the Daily Disney Blog at gmail.com. And please rate and review the show over on iTunes. Even if you don't listen on iTunes, still do that. It helps us out, lets more people find out about the show. With all that said, please sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello everyone, my name is Brad and I'm the host of the Daily Disney Blog Podcast and today is episode 104 and before we start, excuse me, the episode here, I thought it would be fun to go ahead and do the announcement that I teased on the tweet for episodes 102 and 103 yesterday. So why don't we, oh by the way, I hope you guys enjoyed the ride through Wednesday of America Sings, not the best quality but you know it was 1976, what do you want from me? Uh, what was I saying? All right, so let's go ahead and do the announcement here. So I've been, if you guys know, I've been doing YouTube channels. The, oh gosh, uh, the YouTube channel stuff for a while, and I've been having like an issue with like how I want to do it. What, what do I do? I want it to be, for lack of a better term, documentarian style, or do I want to have videos where I'm like, I'm the, it's personality driven, that kind of thing. So. I decided this I don't already have enough to do that I'm just going to do a second YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is almost up and running. I will let you guys know when it is up and running. <sighs> it's been a very lazy day today. Sorry about the yawn there. Um, so I decided to do a second YouTube channel and it's going to be called the Orlando Vlogger because I'll be doing stuff from Disney. I'll be doing stuff from the or just the Orlando area, like cool stuff that's in Orlando, Universal, SeaWorld, all that kind of stuff. Probably not SeaWorld. Um, but this way is not defined just to Disney, which is probably the best move. And uh, if I could go back in time, I probably would change the name of the Daily Disney Blog Podcast. But I still focus on Disney. But I like it, and uh, hopefully... Um, hopefully this will uh, this will all work out well. And so what I'm going to do, the Daily Disney Blog Podcast stuff is going to be just, and I keep, this sounds pretentious, but you know, you get what I'm saying when I say this, just documentary and style. So like the Frozen Ever After ride, when that opened, it was just me recording the video. It's going to be that. Uh, anything that's new or any ride throughs that I decide to do, those are going to be all on the Daily Disney Blog youtube channel and then all the other fun stuff that i'll be doing like um kind of uh, ooh, see that's kind of a mixture i was gonna say like the, the coke store video uh but that one you know was kind of documentary so i'll probably do just like a walkthrough of, of the store for daily disney blog for instance i would do like a walkthrough there and then i would go and do another video which would be like a vlog type thing talking about talking about it and giving my opinion on it so uh I'm not going to be doing the second channel as frequently as the Daily Disney Blog, unless for some reason more people watch that than the Daily Disney Blog one. We'll just have to see how it goes. Probably one a week. Uh, if I get crazy, two a week. So, that's the announcement. So, uh, with all that new stuff said, let's go ahead and move on to the show here. So, today, we're going to be talking about something that I got to experience uh, two new experiences I got to experience at Disney over the past week, and the first one I'm talking about is the Star Wars Fireworks Dessert Party. So this is going to be a full review of the Star Wars Fireworks Dessert Party. So the way these dessert party works is I believe they are $70 per person, at least the one at Hollywood Studios is. I think it's about the same across property. Um, this one was really fun. Um, I obviously it's Star Wars, so I love Star Wars stuff. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so that definitely helps. So, what do you get for that seventy dollars? How does this work? So, you pay your seventy dollars, um, and then with that money included, you get a open bar with three, or I'm sorry, four specialty alcoholic beverages. One of them I didn't try, but we'll go over that in a minute. 
you get a Chewbacca mug, one of the refillable mugs that you get at um, any of the popcorn stands. Like the, you know, you see the BB-8, so it's like a Chewbacca one of that kind of. It's more similar to the Boba Fett one. Um, and then you get all of these amazing themed desserts. It was really, really cool. So let's start off with my favorite thing about the party was the alcohol. Uh, they had four different drinks, and I'll go here and uh, give you the menu. Uh, they had the force, which was pomegranate lemonade with Jim Beam bourbon. Very delicious. The first order finale, which was blood orange lemonade with Caruban coconut rum. The Jacko Jack Who Juicy Cocktail Green Apple Lemonade with Citrus Vodka and Carillion Smothers Coffee with Bailey's. Uh, I did not try the coffee because I don't drink coffee and uh, just not a big fan. So out of all those three, my favorite one was the first order finale. Uh, I love Blood Orange. It's a, one of my favorite flavors. One of my favorite uh, drinks in all of Epcot is the Blood Orange Margarita from La Cava. I love Blood Orange. Um, it was really, really good. The The alcohol level of it was very generous. They didn't play around. They gave you a lot of alcohol for it. Uh, and this one was actually inside. So usually, well, back in the day, like every day, except like this starting this week, it actually, they're moving it inside Launch Bay. Uh, but ours actually took place in um, Disney Junior live on stage. And when you walk in, they have Star Wars music playing. It's fin it's fantastic. So you go in and you check in before you walk into to the to the thing here. You give them your name. They give you a wristband along with your magic band. And it's like mine was a blue wristband. And at the end of it, there was like a detachable ticket. And that's how you got your chewy mug. So as you're going through the dessert party, they have everything. So I'm trying to remember everything. I'm looking through my pictures here. I want to make sure I get everything detailed here. Okay. I'll go in order as I saw stuff. And I have a full video of this if you decide you want to go and check this out, uh, quote unquote, live um, over on the, on the Daily Disney Blog YouTube channel. So the first thing that I saw when I walked in was these statues of these stormtroopers that were like, quote, I always said, I said they were guarding the desserts. Uh, the first thing that I saw was it's called Galactic Size Warm Space Debris Bread Pudding. And it was bread pudding, but it had like everything in it. I mean, it was it was crazy looking. And to the left of that, they had this frozen, dry frozen, uh, they had nitrogen something freeze dried Nutella. So they would scoop this Nutella out, throw it in this uh, CO2 stuff. It would freeze instantly. And then uh, they asked you what kind of topping you wanted, raspberry or dark chocolate. And uh, that was really good. Very unique. Very interesting. But then they also had uh, some stuff that was not dessert so if you're not like you, you want to do one of these parties but you're not a big dessert person they had uh c3po crackers uh there's like cracker ship like c3po they had raspberry and um grapes and all these little skewers with cheese uh it was really really cool um shout out to my bartender lewis he was amazing we had, i ended up talking to him for a little bit he was really cool uh, it, it's a great experience. They had themed desserts. So they had like the, uh, the Darth Maul, uh, eclair and he had like these little white chocolate or maybe macadamia nut little things sticking out like, like his horns. They had blue milk panna cotta. They had a few other things that were, that were themed and it was, it was a lot of fun. They gave out free Mickey bars and, uh, everything else they had. I'm actually looking, I'm actually looking through the pictures here. I want to make sure I don't forget something that was really cool. That was it. It's all I had. Uh, I tried everything that was there. I tried every single thing, and I don't think there was anything that I didn't like at all. Um, there were a few things I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting, but it's not for me. Uh, they had these like, Rice crispy treats that looked like little domes with different colored stuff for pod racing and all kinds of cool stuff. It was, it was a great time. I highly recommend you guys doing this. This is one of my favorite experiences I've ever had at Disney right next to Hoop You Do. I mean, it's, it's way up there for me. I want to do this again very soon because they're moving it into Launch Bay. And uh, I think they'd be a lot more fun actually doing it in a space that is dedicated to Star Wars. And, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. If you, if you have the money to do it, I would definitely try it at least once. See how you like it. Um, I want to see if I can look up and see how much Wishes Dessert Party is because they wouldn't be selling alcohol with that one. And if it's similar in price, it may not be worth it uh, just because if it was just desserts and it wasn't the alcohol included with that. I'm not sure it would be as worth it, but you got to think, you know, if you drink three drinks, that's 30 bucks. And then if you get the Chewbacca mug, that's 15, you're up to 45 bucks. And then it's dessert and then the experience of not. And then how much is it worth to you to not have to wait around for an hour and a half for the spot at the fireworks? You know, I mean, it's that the spot was really good. Uh, it wasn't perfect, but it was really good. 
and uh, it beats having to wait around in a great spot for an hour and a half. So uh, definitely something you should consider trying on your next trip. And uh, I can't recommend it highly enough. And if you uh, want to go, let's go. If you're coming on a trip and you want to go to the dessert party, it's all you. I'm in. <laughs> I'll, uh, so let's go to the next half of this episode, which was the 4th of July in Magic Kingdom. By the way, I'm sorry for my voice. My voice is like really low today. It sounds like a sound like bare white. Oh, yeah. This next part of the podcast is going to be all about the 4th of July in Magic Kingdom. Kind of sounds like Morgan Freeman. The 4th of July in Magic Kingdom. Oh, what a day it was. I remember the first time I saw Andy Dufresne. <laughs> he crawled through a mile of his own poop to get out of, the, out of that jail. He did not want to be there. No, not one bit. Not one bit. All right, moving on. Uh, it's, my voice just sounds really low to me. So I actually was able to spend my very first, very first holiday day at the Magic Kingdom. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Interesting thing about 4th of July, because I know this is not how it works with Christmas, just because I know people who have gone on Christmas, and it's just not the same. So 4th of July, this year anyway, was a little bit different, because they have, uh, the first year they've done the tiered annual passes, so they had some stuff that was blocked out for the summer, including this week. And they also did something with the Florida, if you're a Florida resident, you know that they not only do they offer annual passes, but they also offer pretty good discounts on tickets. They have Florida two, or I'm sorry, Florida three and four day tickets, and those were actually blocked out from the first of July to the fourth as well. So all things considered, it was a very mild day at the Magic Kingdom. I got there around two fifteen ish, something like that, and uh, it was a ghost town. Like it really was. There's a video that I posted on of me like my whole day the fourth of July at Magic Kingdom, and I'm in Fantasyland. And it's like two thirty in the afternoon, and there's just like no one around. It's crazy. Uh, there was no line for Be Our Guest. It was a walk-up. You could have easily gotten a lunch reservation. And, and to me, that just sounds insane because when you think of July at Magic Kingdom, you just think of Madhouse, and it just wasn't that during the day. Until around 5.30, then it started to really pick up, and you saw the crowds increase. They did some really interesting stuff this year that, I mean, I don't know if it's this year because I've never done this before or if it's just how they always do it, but they had some backstage areas open to the public. Um, when you're first walking in on Main Street, if you go to the right by the Chapeau, uh, there's there's a backstage area there. They usually open that up um, when it's really cra crazy crowded for fireworks as another way to get out of the park just so there's more guest flow. Uh, they had that open, but they also had an area which is actually behind Tomorrowland uh, that is that was open to guests as well. And I don't think I've ever seen them do that. They actually had the floats from the Move It, Shake It, Dance It, whatever that show is called, Parade. Uh, back there and they were playing DJ music and it was another fireworks viewing area I don't know how you would have seen the fireworks from there, but apparently you could uh, yeah, I don't think you can see the castle from where they were sitting at least not the full castle But uh, it was interesting. So the fireworks show that they showed it was fine uh, It wasn't anything super special As to me, I mean, I know if you're like if you're in the military something it probably hits you a little harder than it does me I am I'm proud to be American don't get me wrong, but uh, it, there was some slow parts in it for me. Um, I, we, I was talking about this. Uh, I, I thought it would be really cool if they had Sam Eagle narrating the attraction uh, for the fireworks. You know, with the stuff coming in the Muppets at Liberty Square. It's possible they could they could have done it. Uh, it would be really cool. But the fireworks show itself was was okay. There were some fireworks that were going off directly behind you, and uh, didn't really make sense to me <laughs> why you would be not like to the left or right of you. I was like I was right in the middle of Main Street head-on view of the castle and uh turn around there's fireworks going off behind you and it just was weird when it's the perimeter fireworks to the left and right of you and they're all going around you can kind of turn around and watch but when you just hear fireworks behind you it's kind of weird um the finale of it was fantastic i still think hollow wishes beats out the fourth of july fireworks and i think that the old Star Wars fireworks beat out Hallow Wishes. I mean, <laughs> that fireworks show was unbelievable. And I think that the uh, Star Wars fireworks were actually better than the 4th of July fireworks at Magic Kingdom. <sighs> so, in review, you sh if you want to have a slow Magic Kingdom day, uh, you should have gone on the 4th of July and gotten there pretty early. It was not that busy. And uh, I think for the 4th of July next year, I'm going to try to go to Epcot for Illuminations because apparently their fireworks are a little bit better. They have stuff that goes off around every building on the World Showcase Lagoon. And it's, uh, it's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot more crazy. But uh, that was, it was fun. It was actually really cool to experience my first Halloween, or Halloween? Hmm, holiday at Magic Kingdom and to be in the 4th of July. 
uh, it was a lot of fun. So I really enjoyed it. And uh, thank you guys so much for downloading this episode. I know it's kind of short, but I'm not feeling so hot. My voice is not feeling so hot. So I had another segment that I was going to do here, but I'm going to hang off and try to do it tomorrow. Hopefully my voice will hold up <clears throat> a little bit better. Um, that is it. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Periscope, all at Daily Disney Blog. And please rate and review the show on iTunes and Stitcher. Check out the YouTube channel on YouTube.com slash the Daily Disney Blog. And uh, check out the website, the Daily Disney Blog Podcast.wordpress.com. Thank you so much. I think I forgot something, but I don't care. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll be feeling better. Bye. Hey, it's Brad again. Thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. It means a lot to me that you download each and every episode. And I want to thank you personally from the bottom of my heart. I love Disney, and I love getting the chance to make your day even just a little bit more magical. Thanks again, and I will see you on the next show.